regarding the systemic lupus erythematosus diagnostic and the classification criteria there are various uh, diagnostic criteria which have evolved over the years in summary we will see what are all the salient points with this each classification if we take the evolution of this SLA diagnostic and classification system the ACR criteria have been updated in 1971 1982 and the latest that we are following is the ACR criteria of 1997 here there are the 10 points which include both clinical and the laboratory these two we can skip as of now whichever is important for the exam that only I am going to discuss here the 10 points the simple mnemonic is MD soap and hair the mnemonic that we used to use in our UG days M is for malar ras, discoid ras, S is serositis, O is oral or nasal ulceration, A is arthritis, P is photosensitivity, N is neurological involvement, H is hematological involvement, either the hemolytic anemia, leukopenia or lymphopenia, the count is less than 4000 or thrombocytopenia less than 1 lakh immunological involvement in the form of either anti-DSN DNA positive or anti-Smith APLA or ANA these were the criteria which was used in the ACR of 1997 or renal involvement here the proteinuria is either 24 hour urinary protein of more than 500 milligram or presence of any cellular cost this was the description given in the 1997 ACR criteria. How to diagnose systemic lupus erythematosus? Out of this, 4 out of 10 parameters should be present. If it is present, the patient fulfilled the diagnostic criteria for systemic lupus erythematosus. The sensitivity with this is around 70 to 91 percentage, and specificity is around 92 percentage approximately. Then subsequently, the next criteria which got released in 2012 is the SLICC, the SLIC criteria. SLICC, this is systemic lupus international collaboration collaborating clinic here what they have did they have changed this into clinical criteria and the immunological criteria they have subdivided so for the diagnosis here in this almost what are the changes in this SLICC criteria is The mala rash and discoid rash have been removed and the parameter like acute cutaneous lupus, chronic cutaneous lupus have been introduced. Then rest of the synovitis, that is non-erosive arthritis, non-scarring alopecia, oral or nasal ulceration, serositis. Here the renal disorder update over here in this SLICC is the urinary protein creatinine ratio was included more than 500. Basically, the patient should pass more than 500 mg of protein over a period of 24 hours. Here they didn't use the PCR. Here the PCR is introduced. Presence of RBC cast is included as a uh, renal involvement. Then neurological, hemolytic, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia all remains the same. Then ANA here as you see in this criteria they have used above the laboratory reference range. They didn't give any title then anti-DSDNA positive, anti-SMIC positive, APLA either anti-beta-2 glycoprotein, cardiolipin or lupus anticoagulant low complement have been included, direct spooms test for the diagnosis ACR 4 out of 10 in total in SLICC 4 out of 10 in total but one should be from each domain one should be at least one should be from 
clinical domain one from the immunological domain at least one in the two category here they didn't do any subdivision here the subdivision was done or presence of lupus nephritis plus ANA positive this also one of the diagnostic criteria for SLE in under SLICC in SLICC the sensitivity is higher around more than 90 to 92 percentage but specificity is somewhat lower in the range of 75 to 80 percentage specificity is somewhat lower sensitivity is higher in SLICC then comes the the updated latest one which got published in 2017 this is the latest use uh, ular acr criteria for the diagnosis and the classification of sle what are all the changes they have made it compared to the previous leak actually this video was made to discuss this classification classification criteria with the previous slicc if you are a dm resident for the final exam all the three criteria have to be in your fingertip because questions will be asked from each and every point of this table here they have made the clinical symptoms into the domain and the points have been allotted it is not that patient will be having symptom point one will be given similar to acr ular or slick here for example constitutional symptom presence of fever patient will be given two points other domain like cutaneous domain like alloplasia oral ulcer acute cutaneous lupus chronic all will be taken under the one domain of cutaneous domain only one score will be given for each domain for this neurological if the patient is having both seizure and delirium like it is not like 2 plus 5 is 7 like no only one score will be taken from one domain whichever is the higher score for example if patient is having seizure and delirium higher score will be taken Serocytis pericarditis, this hematological domain, renal domain, renal domain, most important for the DM nephrology resident. They have taken the classification class 2, class 5, lupus nephritis 8, class 3, class 4, lupus nephritis is 10. So, what was the diagnostic uh, criteria? The importance in this is they have made ANA as an entry criteria, which is very, very important only you can diagnose sle only if the patient is ana positive at a tighter of 1 is to 80 or above in hep 2 cell line so this is the criteria they have made in the new ular acr criteria once the patient enters the entry criteria for this sle then only you can allot the points and the total point have to be more than 10 like as i told there are domains, constitutional domain, cutaneous domain, arthritis domain, neurological domain, serolocytis, hematological, renal domain. Points will be given to the higher scored symptom. In the immunological, anti apla positive, low complement, look at the scores, how it is being given. So once the ANA is positive, then it forms the entry criteria, then you have to make the diagnosis just a biopsy proven lupus nephritis without any other uh, any other systemic manifestation like score is almost 10 for class 4 lupus nephritis here the cost has been removed these are all the important points we have to make sure there is no other etiology for example if the patient is having seizure there should not be any other organic cause the highest domain will be given and the, throughout the time for example in 2020 uh, in 2020 patient developed seizure in 2021 the patient developed renal dysfunction as this will be countered like it is not that everything have to occur simultaneously it can occur at any point of time so this is the third important new ular acr criteria for the classification of sle what is the difference between SLICC and this new ACR ULR is? This is highly sensitive, this diagnostic criteria, highly specific. 
it is more of the classification criteria whereas sl is more of the diagnostic criteria so if we take in summary for sle diagnosis and classification we are having three acr of 1997 SLICC 2012 and the third one is the new EULA ACR criteria. So here 4 out of 10, here also 4 out of 10 but 1 from each domain, at least 1 in each domain, 1 in each domain. Are the presence of ANA plus lupus nephritis and the small changes like uh, malar rash, discoid rash, and all have been removed that I already discussed. With respect to the latest one, here ANA 1 is to 80 forms the entry criteria. After this only, we have to consider the table, the total points have to be more than 10. So which criteria to use? You can either use SLA, SLICC criteria or EULA or ACI criteria. Mainly you have to aware there are three classification system. Question can be asked from any of these.